Hi, Brock Bites here. And in this episode, we're going to talk about why fiber is a superior medium than copper for delivering data. Everyone knows that uh, fiber can do more bandwidth, but no one really knows the technical reasons why. In this episode, we're gonna cover why this is better than this, and through this, how I can deliver hundreds of gigs of bandwidth. Here we have copper cables. Easily a copper cable can do one gig. A good quality copper cable can do 10 gigs. This one will go about 330 feet, they all do. And it is about 15 to 30 cents a foot. So copper can easily do a gig. To do 10 gigs, you need a high quality cable. But also on fiber, you can do about the same speed. So why would you want to use copper over fiber? Well, it's a lot cheaper and easier to work with. To get this working, all I have to do is take this end smush it on here, take a crimper, put it on and it gets working. To do the same thing with a fiber cable, it takes a lot more work and specialized machinery. With optical cable, you can't send any electricity through it. With this, you can send electricity over these eight wires and you can power things like phones, you can power your cameras and you can power a lot of other devices that otherwise you'd be running power to and it'd be cost prohibitive to actually uh, get installed with optical cable even though it has a lot of bandwidth. If I ever have to run an access point, it's not gonna be with fiber. It's gonna be with copper. If I ever have to run a phone, if I have to do anything with electricity, it's always a copper cable. So here we have fiber optics. The fiber itself comes in a lot of different form factors. Here we have six strand fiber. Both of them are six strand fiber. This is something like I would run in the ground on the streets. This is something like I'd run inside of conduit between two buildings. They also make stuff that actually has the conduit actually attached, armored cable. And depending on how you're doing it, all the insides pretty much look the same though when you get down to the individual strands. They're just a tiny piece of glass. You have to take off the shielding and then you get what's called the core and the cladding. The cladding goes around the core. When you get down to it, it's really, really thin. So in order to use it, you have to have pretty good high sight. So the thing that makes this really cool is this can go about 80 kilometers without expensive regeneration stuff. If uh, you remember, copper only goes about 100 yards, which is about the size of a football field. If I ran this contiguously, I could get to California or Arizona, here from here in Nevada, in Las Vegas, without uh, any fancy optics or amplifiers or anything like that. And on top of that, here we have what makes fiber optics really cool. Notice there's no power. This is pretty much a prism and mirrors, but from coming out of one port on here, I can now do a few hundred wavelengths, all doing the same amount of data through this one tiny piece of glass. Here we have multi-mode fiber and single-mode fiber. These two types of fiber are allowed for different things. Back in the day, this was made of plastic and a lot cheaper than glass, which allows you to go a lot further. This will only go a few thousand feet. This will go up to 80 kilometers. Really, nowadays, it's all single-mode. And the thing about single-mode is you plug it into any kind of optic, and the different kind of optic will give you a different color that can go down here. So here we have the tools that enable us to use multiple wavelengths through a single fiber. So here you would plug this into the network port of the switches or the wave, the multiplexers. And from doing this, say if I'm across the city, from that we now have eight individual ports that we can plug in and have eight individual connections from that one fiber. So where we typically would just have one connection between, say you have a server on one side of town and something on the other side, now we could connect eight individual devices or networks to this thing without any kind of uh, CPU or processor that would require electricity. That gives you a lot of flexibility when you want to build into network redundancy and mass amount of data that you can transfer. So let's say we ran our fiber all across the city. How do we test it and see if it works? Well, the best way is something called a visual fault finder. All this is is a cheap laser, and all it does is shine a red light through the end. If you actually do have a problem on a fiber and you cut it or so, 
you can see red light coming out of it. It's easy to determine where the problem with fiber is, unlike electricity where if you do have one cable that went bad throughout the, throughout the strand, the only thing you can really do is replace it. Where here, we do find a problem. We could cut it and fusion splice these back together. If it's within your specifications, which most of the specifications the manufacturer will tell you, and you still can't get it, the next thing is using this thing. This was an optical time division reflexometer, or OTDR, and this will tell you in feet where you're having light loss or any kind of event that happens throughout your uh, fiber because it can go so far, it could cap up to miles or kilometers. This is pretty accurate, it can get within like 10 to 20 feet, and from there you can usually see if someone accidentally dug up your line, if uh, a car ran into a pedestal with something in it, and it's usually just some kind of bend or something that happened or nicked the fiber. So when we do copper, all we have to do is take our end, put it onto there, smush the cables in, put it in there, take our crimper, and this is ready to go. Just plug it in your computer and you can get online. With our fiber cable, it's not quite as easy. So we have to take our fibers and cleave it down to the individual fibers with our cleaver. This will take it and do a clean cut across it. From there, we put it into our fusion splicer, line up the cables to each other, put the little magnets down, close the door, and then we'll be able to see on the screen if it likes it or not. Here we have with the 0.1 dB loss, which is really good. If you tried to do this by hand, there's no way you can do it with less than 2 dB loss, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is, especially if you have a few of them throughout the uh, plant. So here, you can see that we have our fusion splice fiber connected together, and it provides a lot of advantages over your, your uh, copper cabling. You don't have to worry about any kind of power or any issues going over this. If you run this over lights, or if you run it over any kind of coax cable, or if you run it over power lines, you're gonna get some kind of interference and it's not gonna work well. And you'll just spend hours pulling out your hair trying to figure out what is the problem? Why doesn't my copper work? Especially when it's just when someone activates their power. But with this, since it's just glass, you never have to worry about any kind of interference. It's truly a great medium to work with. You've laid in the ground and you can usually forget about it. If you want unlimited cable, this one cable we spliced together, you could do hundreds of gigs in terabits even of data with the right kind of optics. It's really the magical uh, keystone to allow you to do unlimited bandwidth to all your customers.